Hey guys, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm gonna unbox and set up the Vertigear PL4800 gaming chair. This is part of their 800 series. I already unboxed and set up a 3800, which is their smaller, less expensive version, but I wanted to open up and build this uh, the next day, believe it or not, so I can kind of get a good feel for the back and forth between the size differences, and while it's fresh in my head, see if there's any assembly differences. So I'm gonna unbox it. This was sent to me for review, so huge thanks to Vertigear. It won't change what I say about it. They claim this is going to be an ergonomic gaming chair, which I've heard before. Haven't really ful fulfilled that entirely, but we'll see how much better this one is because the 3800 actually had better back support than I thought. So we're gonna unbox this, set it up, and see what it looks like. Right off the bat, the box is noticeably larger and heavier than the 3800 I already reviewed, or uh, assembled. So this is a two-person job for the most part to safely move in different areas of your home unless you're fortunate enough to have a dolly. All right, so this is packaged the exact same way as the 3800 uh, with the way the foam is and everything. I'm assuming the assembly process will be the same, which should be pretty uh, straightforward, but let's find out. Okay, so we have the base, same finish as the 3800. It's this like black satin finish base. It's metal, of course. Let's pull the seat back out. Just like the 3800, this is basically a giant Ziploc bag, which is pretty cool. Uh, I kind of want to save this in case I have a future use for it. So this is a hybrid uh, material. Basically, you have this like leatherette exterior, and then this is kind of a suede type breathable fabric on the middle. And then you have a dark leatherette on, the, on here. So there's definitely a few different colors and contrast things going on. They have the yellow stitching and some blue. Um, we'll see how that looks put together. I'm usually not a fan of the seatbelt harness thing, but Vertigear has an RGB kit so you can make your seat light up along with custom logos. So I'm gonna revisit that later in a separate video. So opening up this box within a box, this is the hardware to attach uh, the seat to these rails that stick out. It also comes with this large Allen wrench key. And just like the 3800, I have a pet hair remover, which is washable, so that's pretty cool. Looks like you can slightly adjust the width of these as well. Um, they seem to be tight. Let's just check. Yeah, they're tight. So I guess if you want to make the seat slightly more narrow on the armrest, you can actually do that a little bit. These are threading out really, really nicely. Um, very, very little effort needed. It's smooth. I don't know if they just have really high quality screws or if there's a tiny dab of grease in each one to make it go this smooth, but this feels great. So with the seat base, we are going to point arrow up and arrow up. So I'm basically gonna do it like this. And uh, if you can kind of get an idea what that looks like, basically you want the piston part uh, where this thing goes, that's what's gonna attach to the bottom. That has to be towards the back of the seat. So I'm gonna install the top two screws first. You don't really wanna to torque anything down until you get all four screws in because I can see clearly that I need to lift this base up just a little bit in order to get them all to thread in properly. So I have three screws in here. Let's get the fourth one. And then after that, all I have to do is make sure it's centered to an extent, of course. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll torque everything down and then the rest of the assembly is actually pretty fast and easy. The fact that you have that uh, peace of mind knowing that you're not like really jamming a screw in and it's going in pretty painlessly makes you feel pretty good about ever having to work on it down the road. So I'm gonna do the wheels on this base now. Make sure I don't scratch anything. You always wanna assemble this on carpet or some kind of protective surface so you don't damage your chair. And the wheels are easy. You don't need to use any special tools. Just simply make it go in straight, put a little pressure in, and it'll slide right in. They go in easier than they come out, so if you have to remove them, um, it's gonna require more force that we, you know, so it doesn't fall out on you when you move it. That's mainly why they're designed that way. All right. So we have the shock here. Remove this red cap. Do not press on this uh, or this will expand very quickly. So I'm gonna place that on top. That's ready to go. And I uh, wanted to mention, I had those levers I pulled out earlier. Those are gonna face forward. All right, and they're actually labeled. So just look for A on here and A on the outside edge and that's gonna help you line it up correctly. All right, so I have the paddles in. I have the shock ready, the wheels are on. I'm gonna slide this out of the way. And now we have the moment of truth of putting the chair on the base before I move on to the seat back. So this is gonna have a little weight to it. Obviously you may need help. All 
All right, so the uh, seat is mounted. Now this bracket is locked to this. It tells you not to pull it until the seat back is mounted. This one moves freely because this is basically what's locking the seat in place. So you, what you want to do is kind of eyeball it, make sure that uh, the seat will go in the same way on both sides because these little tabs or inserts, if you will. You can kind of see like a slot on the chair there. So I'm going to put this on. I'm going to start with this side first, the loose side. It's a little bit snug. All right, so getting it on was actually pretty painless. Uh, that slid in quite nice. So I'm going to take these screws out of this package. And again, you don't want to torque them all down until you get all four in. So I'm going to carefully put these in first. I, ha I know I have to rock the seat cushion a little bit, probably push it down slightly just so it seats properly. And once I get all four in, I'll, I'll torque it down. It won't take a seat. So I put these in by hand and I'm doing a few extra turns so it doesn't come out or jam up while I'm working on the other side. So similar to my 3800, three went in very easily. One of them is a little more snug than the others. All right, so we got the seat assembled. That wasn't too bad. Now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna try it without the pillow for my headrest first. And I can already tell I have to recline this a little bit. Okay, so it is a different feel than the 3800. Uh, the 3800 was smaller, so naturally I felt a little bit more constrained in it. This is definitely a better fit. I'm six feet tall, so this is kind of what you want. Um, yeah, all right, let's, let's get cozy. So one thing right off the bat, the armrests are fairly firm, just like the 3800. However, they have an extra button on them to lock the forward and back motion. Uh, with the 3800, it's just a tension uh, that keeps it in place. So when you get up, if you push forward, they're gonna slide forward, et cetera. So if you move your elbow a certain way leaning on it, the 3800 is gonna move. The 4800 is locked in. Now I can squeeze this and make it go left and right. I can squeeze this button, go forward and back, and then the outer one is to raise and lower. So this is actually a pretty good compromise. I had the Andesi Kaiser review that I did, and I really love the base of that. The, the butt cushion, if you will, is extremely comfortable, but I had issues with the back. It didn't contour enough, and it had the adjustable lumbar support, which I liked. However, you can feel more of a bar sticking out. This one is not adjustable, but it does it through a padding and natural curvature of the chair. So if you want back support, this is almost as soft as a seat base. It's definitely softer than Secret Labs um, and my uh, AK racing chair. And I think the back support is probably the best so far. Yeah, so the pillow, I think in some, you know, if my chair is upright, I think the pillow might keep my head a little bit too far forward. Luckily it's removable. I think the big kicker is if you lean back a little bit, the pillow is better for that because it'll help support your head. So this is good if you like to lean back. And I have two levers here. Now that I locked that in, so my seat with the left lever can now no longer rock forward and back. And my right lever is gonna adjust my height so I can pull it and lift it and get my feet higher off the ground. But this is a very comfortable chair for a gaming seat. The big thing, I meant to say this, um, the racing harness things that I'm usually not a fan of, I'm happy that they made them higher. I'm six feet tall, they're above my shoulder, which means when I lean back, I don't feel the hard plastic touching my shoulders like I did with the Anda seat. And that was a complaint I listed in that review because when you lean back, you feel a hard point. In my normal sit position sitting up, don't notice it as much. But this chair kind of encourages you to lean back a little bit and I'm glad that that's not an issue because that was my concern with the cutouts. Usually I prefer like the 6800 style which has that straight back, no cutouts, no RGB support. Uh, but this is still very comfortable. All right, so I have the Vertigear 3800 to my right and the 4800 to my left behind me. I wanted to put them side by side so you can see what they look like next to each other, but also me, a six foot tall person, I wanted to sit in both so you can kind of get a real life perspective on what the size is. It's one thing to read the mention or dimensions and measurements online, but depending on your height, maybe this will help put it in perspective. All right, so now I'm sitting in the 3800 um, on the lowest possible setting. Now the armrests are maxed out for height. I can lower them quite a bit. So if you're buying this and you're a smaller person or if you're buying it for a kid, uh, this can get quite low and that'll help grow as your kid gets older or you get older or taller, I should say. Uh, but overall, I find the armrests get uh, plenty tall enough. Again, you can adjust forward and back and even turn them in and out. The only thing I notice, again, as a six foot tall person is these side bolsters are a little bit narrow for me. If I put my arms back in the armrest, it's not uncomfortable, but I do feel the pressure uh, behind my arms. So, uh, and then if I max out the height, 
Let's do that now. It can get plenty high. This is enough to fit a six foot tall person, no problem. My feet are high off the ground and the armrests are high enough. The only thing I really feel is just this and it's not even that bad. So the 3800, even though it's a much more compact and even lighter chair and less expensive chair, you can still fit as a six foot tall person. However, you can see this maxed out is only now touching what the 4800 can do. So I'm gonna sit in that and see how it feels in comparison. So this just feels right. Now I could easily sit in that no problem. The ergonomics and overall fit and feel are pretty solid. Um, this gets rid of that side bolster issue, but it's overall seems like it's better suited for my height. Um, I like that you have these locking armrests so they don't move on their own. It can get taller, so let's lift that up. So seat cushion is a comparable height, maybe an inch taller off the ground, but it's pretty much the same thing. I just feel more comfortable in this chair. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's better suited if you're a taller person. I would just spring for the 48 and up uh, size wise. But anyway, that's how I look compared to both chairs. You can clearly see side by side that the 4800 is physically larger, a little bit wider, etc. Hopefully that helped you uh, know the difference between the two. All right, so that wraps up the assembly portion and I guess initial test drive. I'm going to uh, use this for a while. I don't know how many days or weeks it'll take, but I wanna use this for an extended period of time. Luckily, I work from home so I can put it through its paces. That way I can come back to you with some honest feedback on what I think of the long-term durability and comfort. So I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, so you made it through the build part of the video, or you skipped, which is totally fine, and you used chapters. Good for you for optimizing your time. Uh, the build process was relatively straightforward. You know, I spent some time talking about it during the assembly process, but you can do it relatively quickly with the included tool. That's all you really need. Um, I wanna talk more about comfort in my everyday use, uh, as far as like a real world comparison of how it compares to other chairs I've used in the past. Because this is a gaming chair, they have an optional RGB kit, which I'll be reviewing at a later video, so don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell icon on. That will be a dedicated video for those who don't care about RGB. Because I'll be honest, when I saw RGB, I associated it with, oh, this is just another gaming chair. You know, uh, anytime I see RGB, I don't think that ergonomics and comfort and build quality necessarily go hand in hand with that product. So I wanna start with that by saying that wasn't the case with this chair. Um, the quality and comfort was bar none the best I've had on a gaming chair. Now, obviously, I haven't reviewed or used the Herman Miller like $2,000 plus Logitech series gaming chair, if you will. This is literally a fourth of the price, so I don't want to compare it to stuff like that. What I do want to compare it to is other chairs that I've owned, and that includes DX Racer, AK Racing, lots of racing chairs, uh, my Andesite, and I know, oh, and Secret Labs. The Secret Labs has that really stiff butt cushion, which I just could not deal with. Um, the, the, when I compare it to other brands in more detail, you know, when you look at the AK racing, that was a $700 chair. I think it sells for a grand now because it was real leather. Um, it wasn't a bad chair necessarily. It still works, but from a comfort standpoint, it's pretty terrible in comparison to something like this. The seat cushion's huge and wide. If you're a big person and you don't care about the back support because you're only sitting for 20 minutes at a time, then yeah, maybe the AK racing that giant chair would be a good option. What I really wanna focus on is when you sit on a chair properly for a long period of time, that's where the Vertigear series, the new 800 series they came out with shines. Now they have four models and they have the 3800, which is their smallest, least expensive one. I'll be reviewing that soon. The 4800, 5800, and 6800. Um, this is, for me, what, what stands out is you have to sit in a proper seating position, ergonomic position, to truly benefit from a chair like this. Some gaming chairs, because there's no back support or the seat cushion is long and flat, it almost encourages you to sit in a poor position. No lumbar support typically results in you slouching forward because your lower part of your back is curving this way. You know, like if I'm leaning like this, your lower back pops out a little bit or you lift your legs up or you sit on one leg. It's okay, I guess, if you're moving around a bit, but the true to get true support, lumbar support like this, you can't sit in positions like that. This has a contoured lower seat cushion that goes down early on. And there's this Verta Air technology system that helps the chair breathe inside so your butt doesn't get too hot, which leads to something else that I'm not gonna say in the video. Um, when you slouch or slide your butt forward and your legs are hanging off, because this chair 
has um, the seat cushion isn't incredibly deep. It's deep, but because it curves, it doesn't feel as deep as a couple others like from Andesite or AK Racing. Um, but when you slide down, you don't feel like you're getting much support because it's encouraging you to sit in a proper position. And when I first started sitting in this, the first week was actually like an adjustment period. I guess my posture had been bad for so long with the other chairs that when I transitioned to something like this, it really helped my lower back. Um, I, I can almost feel like the slow alignment happening again. And I've had a couple situations actually earlier this morning included where I sit in the chair and I press against it and I almost get like a really tiny pop in my lower back because it's kind of restoring the proper curvature of my back. Um, that's what I want to focus on the most. It's not a gimmick. It blows me away at how good this is. I reviewed the Anda seat, which I really like the seat cushion for like a 20 or 30 minute sit. It's incredibly comfortable, but for long periods of time, it doesn't have true lower back support. It has a bar with a foam pad over it and you can adjust it, which is cool, but all it is is a bar pushing the foam pad out. This has a proper lower contoured uh, back support design and Look, I review mostly gaming products, audio products, hi-fi stuff, et cetera, which I absolutely love. But I think it's fair to say that 95% of my viewer base sits in a computer chair. Uh, maybe even all of them. I have no clue what the demographics are for chairs. But everyone sits in a chair. Um, so I'm not against covering chairs from time to time because we all sit in them. And it's important to know what you're getting. I would pick this over all of my other brands I've ever owned. If I had to buy one right now today, knowing what I know now, um, this is such a transformative transformative experience for support because now I, it's like the chair's calling me out. Like, no, you're slouching. You're not getting the support you need. Sit back up. And it takes getting used to. So I'm going to start with that. You may feel like, oh, this is kind of weird or it's not for me. Just give it some time. And it really is a noticeable improvement. I feel so much better after a long work day because I work from home. The comfort is is on another level. It's built well. Um, the armrests, if I had a nitpick, the armrests aren't really that padded. This is the same with every gaming seat I've ever reviewed. I don't know why the armrests are always so firm. Maybe it's for durability. I do like that these lock to go in and out and lift and you know all that stuff. These have never like magically let go or failed on me. You know when you get up and push on them, they haven't just broken free and twisted or something like that. So they've held up well. They actually look really nice. They look well made and I really love the finish with like this dark chrome look to it. This even has like a racing wheel on the bottom for the pedestal. So if you're, um, you're looking into that aesthetic, it's a nice looking wheel. It's not chrome and there's not multiple finishes going on, which is kind of nice because it doesn't stand out, but it's just one of those details if you look up close. Even the mounting hardware for the seat when you look underneath the seat and see how well everything's put together, nothing comes across as cheap. Nothing comes across as an afterthought. Now, this particular series, and most of them, have basically six color choices to choose from. I would have preferred all black. I love the understated monochromatic look because it's timeless. This has a nice dark blue to it with some yellow stitching. So maybe if you drive a Volvo, you will absolutely love this. Um, but in all seriousness, it's mild enough, um, especially when you're sitting in it. And this hybrid approach has this nice durable leather at outside, so it's pretty easy to clean. And then that suede material inside helps the seat breathe more. No, again, I, to me, the big thing is, is I can sit in this for a much longer period of time without being in pain. Over every gaming chair I've ever reviewed. It's not even close. Those are big statements, and I try to avoid saying stuff like that. But if you're, you know, if a family member or a friend asked me what gaming chair to buy, I would just say this anyway, because... You know, you're my friend <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you to go buy something that I don't think is that comfortable. Um, it's a great chair. I, I, this thing with the RGB, I mentioned that earlier. Luckily, they're higher up, so I don't have to feel my shoulders touching it. Um, but I've been really happy with it. And I hope you're happy with this video and answering any questions you may have had. So uh, with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would love to see you in a future video. The channel's been growing a lot. Can't, I was just celebrating 20,000 subs at Christmas time, and now we're about to hit 30K, depending on when you watch this. Maybe we already did. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for the support. I will see you in the next one. Take care.